Well, happy Saturday, Twin Cities, and welcome back to The Connect Show, where every week, me and my business besties, we get together for the inside scoop when it comes to just being a woman in business and a female entrepreneur. So help me welcome my co-hosts, Ali Nanny Lasharanis and Michaela Klum. Hi, Happy Saturday. How is everybody holding up? You know, it's been yet another tough week here in the Twin Cities more craziness happening just sunday we were just talking about off camera in our hometown of burnsville yesterday like how are you ladies handling it and holding up yeah i feel like i'm taking deep breaths embracing myself i'm trying to like all the stuff we talked about way back i feel like a few episodes ago um when we were talking about you know new year's resolutions and like mine is like be more mindful it's like no i really am trying to practice that and not yeah look at my phone because there's so much negative news like regardless of how much i edit my timeline it's really tough so honestly i'm just taking deep breaths and you know um deciding how much i want to engage today right if i have the luxury to do so so i might do target pickup versus go in the store most likely yeah. um so yeah i'm just taking it one literally one day at a time yeah i'm right there with you michaela i Last night, I had to tell my husband to turn the news off. I was so stressed watching it. Like, I could feel my blood was just, like, getting hotter and hotter. Like, everything on there is just negative, negative. Um, it's really terrifying and super scary. Um, even even as far as this little boy was, there's a pretty graphic video of a little boy getting stuck under a Peloton. And I was like, why are you showing that on the you news? Know. It's absolutely terrifying. And my, my husband, like, never gets kind of you know anxiety ridden but he's like that gave me so much anxiety and we immediately turned off the tv yeah i've really been focused on work like i it's insane this real this real estate market is out of control it's definitely a seller's market and so that's something i've been able to or forced to dive in um and focus on but i am kind of again tensing up bracing myself because of what's happening here in the twin cities and and this being the end of uh you know the trial that we all know about. Um, and so, yeah, focusing on work has been kind of my escape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went up north um, to do like a little getaway, stay at a cabin and trying to kind of forget about everything that was going on. And sure enough, as we're coming back into the city, um, one of the hotels must be hosting the National Guard and there was like 50 trucks in there. So it's just like, no matter how I might try to like disconnect from it, it's just like very present. Well, speaking of connecting with all of the things that are going on in our communities, do you guys feel like these companies and businesses that you support have an obligation to speak out against, um, you know, some of the things that matter to you? And, 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 and does it make a difference in how you'll spend your dollars? Definitely an obligation to do something for the community, go out and do things um, for these families that are going through these really difficult times um, to show that support. It's just how to go about it is, mm -hmm. I guess, is where it's hard from a business owner standpoint, but definitely an obligation, yes. Yeah, I agree with Allie. I think there's an obligation um, and I definitely, um, you know, use that to inform my dollar, right? I am looking um, so much so where these companies will say, hey, we're giving X amount of dollars here. You know, I want to see the receipts. I want to see the follow-up. So it depends, right? Um, I try to do that as much as I can. Um, that in and of itself can get a little exhausting, right? To always feel like you're having to hold um, accountable, but I think it's the necessary work. It feels like it, the least I can do. Um, so I definitely feel like there's an obligation, but I hear you, Allie. I think, you know, I think that's encouraging to hear that you're trying to be thoughtful about it because I think the problem comes when people aren't thoughtful and maybe they just put out something that they feel like is good. Right. So I think giving it a lot of thought is important because it's a very, uh, sensitive subject. Um, so I feel like that's a great place to start. Yeah, I did actually go on and do a, a questionnaire and I just said, please let me know like what you suggest we do as a business to help. Um, I want to hear your thoughts because I think that was more beneficial. Um, and then, you know, in a few days here, I'll follow up on what we're going to do. But that was probably the best thing I've ever done as far as like getting advice from our following. Sure. 
Well, I know I look at my Facebook memories from a couple of years ago and I was way more vocal than I am now. Wow. And I said what I needed to say and what I wanted to say. And I really had to, you know, get a little bit more focused and quiet because I am running a business now. I do have a team and we are, you know, very, you know, seen in the Twin Cities. And so I pick kind of my battles of what I want to take a stance on. I certainly have a strong opinion about a lot of things, but I don't always use my voice now on social media just because of, like I said, being a business owner, you have to be careful. Um, but I do wanna give a quick shout out to the team lead at my office, Keller Williams Integrity Lakes in Uptown. They sent an email, they acknowledge what's happening in the world, how it might impact our office, our space, um, and just kind of giving a heart to what's happening. And I certainly appreciate it hearing from my leadership that they see me, they hear me, personal text messages, personal phone calls to check on me. And I really do thank them for that. It means a lot. Mm -hmm. And I love what you just shared, uh, Lasha, because I feel the same. It's I've looked back at my pieces too, like, mm, and I got that in there, you know, because some of this uh -huh. is so frustrating that you have to like find an opportunity to share your feelings. And, you know, with respect, I, I, that's how I always deliver anyway in general. But, um, you know, it's interesting as you lead a team and as you start working with people and start building your brand, there are other ways that can be more effective than me posting something. I can, I can, I can make a difference in how I hire. I can make a difference in where I spend my money. You know, I can make a difference in so many more powerful ways than just hopping behind a computer and and adding a few words there. It's like, you know, they, you know, that song "Walk It Like You Talk It," right? Mm -hmm. That, that yeah. that's what I like to do. So, um, but we are gonna take a quick break. A lot coming up. There's a shooting in Austin. We didn't get to talk about that. Austin, Texas, and then COVID still affecting um us here in the twin cities and beyond plus children that's that's uh the new deal as well so we're going to talk about that and much more and lighten the mood right after the break we'll be right back For local businesses is critical, but it can be pretty confusing. At Vivial, we work with you to understand your business and individual marketing needs to tailor a custom design solution so you can focus on what you do best, running your business. Want to learn more about Vivial's digital marketing services? Find us online at vivial.net forward slash Natalie. Oh, welcome back to The Connect Show, Twin Cities, where we inspire, we influence, and we network on your Saturday. Yeah, so uh, some of us have gone on vacation. You know, me and Allie were out. Lasha, you were in Cabo recently, right? So um, it got me thinking, like, about traveling. So, um, you know, my husband and I are pretty laid back in kind of the same type of traveler, so to speak. So, like... Hmm you know, like some activities, but not everything scheduled. So, you know, everybody's different. And I thought it'd be fun to try and guess each other's travel style. <laughs> Michaela, I'm actually, I'm kind of shocked. I felt like you would be a very like planned traveler. Yeah, um, no, I, I'm pretty go with the flow. Um, Cause I'm so structured with the kids at home. So it, 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 it has looked different. Um, so I'm pretty open to anything. I just, you know, hopefully you guys aren't the person who's like, in the window seat, always getting up, going to the bathroom. Mm. Not that person. But no, I like to go with the flow. All right, this is interesting. So there's several styles. So Lash, I think you're gonna, are you gonna take it away and kind of introduce us to the styles that we, we can choose from? You at home, I guess you're gonna play too. So yeah, there you have it. The different styles, right? One, urban traveler. You love everything concerning town life, design, culture, and art, restaurants. Uh, bars, shopping, you enjoy roaming the streets, exploring one district after the other. Um, that seems exhausting to me, but 
the photographers of the world, right? So these are the type of travelers who travel around the year, taking panoramic and mind blogging pictures around yeah. the sun, uh, around around them, what's happening around them. They travel to capture the natural beauty and they Instagram them to create beautiful stories. That's what I would mm. like to be. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is Allie. <laughs> wow. So then we've got three relaxation and nature love travelers. So whether it's on the beach, at the pool, at the lush park, kind of love to unwind and take yourself away from the everyday hustle and bustle. Um, mm -hmm. For your foodies, right? Foodie traveler, local cuisine plays a big part in the decision making of um, process of what you're planning, your getaway, planning around the food. Um, five backpackers and adventure travelers. Um, so you've got your backpackers or kind of travelers who love to explore the different destinations and they prefer independent travel with a low budget. I like the sounds of that. <laughs> um, and then finally, number six, soul searchers. So these are your travelers whose prime objective is to travel around, find themselves and ponder the deepest philosophies of life. So mm, that was good, girl. That was a lot. That was uh -huh. a lot. So, <laughs> mm. Where do you fall? I think I'm a combination of a few things. Um, I'm I'm a bit of an urban traveler. If I'm going to go to a new space, I want to see how you live, how you eat, what you know, you, you embrace your culture, um, and explore. Um, I I want to take some pretty pictures too. So I'm a bit of a photographer and the foodie. I love to eat and I love my cocktails. So if you have both of those things, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, then that's just my ideal vacay. What yeah. about you all? I think I'm right there with you, except for the the foodie. I'm just like, give me any food, and I'm Ooh, happy. <laughs> that's good. So you're that's not picky at all. What? Okay. I was saying you're not very picky. I I mean I like to have the freedom to pick. I might have a day like in Cabo. We had a planned day of you know doing some stuff in town, but really I just like to fly by night and kind of go what it feels right. What you know activities i hear about that sounds interesting i really did a lot of relaxation because i was pretty much by myself my oldest didn't join me as planned and so my 14 year old wanted nothing to do with me and was off doing her own thing so i had a lot a lot of relaxation but i found myself bored with mm. that so um so some planned activities but more free to just kind of flow where need where have what happened mm. Yes, 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 yes. If I'm on vacation, I don't want to be planning going on a schedule. I've been on a schedule like <laughs> the whole year. I want to go yeah. have fun, relax, all the things. Yes. Michaela, you said you were kind of just the go with the flow. But yeah, I think that um, I like to know what's available. So if I want to partake in it, I know, okay, there's, you know, parasailing or there's this or that to do um, and have some food destinations in mind. I definitely feel like food kind of, uh, dictates maybe some of that, but other than that, yeah, I just want to go with the flow. I love that you and your hubby are alike in that. Cause that would be kind of interesting if he's one thing and you're another and it's like, woo, child. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was watching the news and I was seeing that younger people are admitting themselves into the hospital, um, for COVID. And that was kind of creepy. Like younger kids and younger people are getting um, COVID, so oh, no. yeah, kind of scary, but I'm not sure if I'm the only one who during COVID has um, kind of entertained the idea of moving. Um, if you guys had to pick up and move right now, where would you go? Mm. If it wasn't so far away, I'd move to Maui immediately. The only reason that I'm hesitant about that is because my family and all my people are here. That would be very difficult to see them on a regular basis, especially when you think of life outside of COVID. Um, but I think I, I love the Austin area, the hill country. You know, I love Texas, so I'd like to stay in Texas or Miami if I like could totally like uproot my whole entire life and family. I don't think they <laughs> But South Florida or the Austin area, outside of Austin. I agree with you with Austin, Texas. I, me and my husband have totally been, I shouldn't say been entertaining. Sorry, um, Patty and Marty. I know they're going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we would actually love like Austin, Texas too. So I nice. think that would be my, my top pick right now. I always thought I would move to Atlanta. Every time I've been to Atlanta, I've totally felt like that was home i just felt like the energy yeah, and the gosh. music and the food and just mm -hmm. i just love atlanta and i thought i would live there i'm not in a place now my business is rocking too well to, to move but um moving south has always been something that i think i would 
I'll probably end up there at some point. Um, mm -hmm. One of my favorite places to be. Yeah, I'm with you, Natalie. I think South Florida sounds amazing. Sign me up. I'm ready. Wow. Yeah. Let's go, girl. Let's go. Let's <laughs> pack our bags. We will take a quick break and be right back. Welcome to Crush It With Christy. I'm Christy Primer, president of Primetime Consulting Services. Everything my company represents is empowering and educating and entertaining women to step up and into their best version of themselves. Today, I wanna to share a quick tip with you uh, all about getting you to think bigger and then bigger than that. One of the things I see women doing is diminishing their own self-worth, putting everybody else before themselves. That is a surefire way to kick confidence to the curb. I want you to stop doing that. I want you to pause and ask yourself, what would I want? That is how you build your confidence muscle so you can step up and into who you want to be doing all the things you want to do. To connect further with me and to learn more about how I can help you live your best life, connect with me at primetimecs.com or on Instagram. See you then. Welcome back to The Connect Show. I'm so happy to have you with us on your Saturday. And each week, if you're new, we look to just connect with different women in business and female entrepreneurs. And we're starting off this segment with shopping. That's right. Studies are showing that there's a huge shift in shopping online, as you can imagine, right? If you're anything like me, Amazon is like constantly pulling up. It's a little embarrassing. But um, have you ladies also personally made this shift to, you know, more online or are you still going into the stores? I hate shopping. I've never been a fan ever. I am with the guys sitting on the couch waiting for my children to let me know how much money they need from me. <laughs> I hate shopping. I'm online shopping all day, every day. And uh, I prefer that way before COVID. That's always been my style. So. Mm. Me too, Lash. I did a lot of online shopping, even grocery shopping. I would use Instacart uh, pre-COVID. And I, I remember we were my parents were here for Thanksgiving and I was um, getting prepared to order my turkey and order my ham. And my mom was like, you're going to order that from the store. Don't you want to <laughs> see it? Don't you want to see what it looks like? You like, you know, and it was so funny because no, I didn't want to see what it looked like. In fact, I can leave a note and make a recommendation and blah, blah, blah. So uh, yeah, I've been doing that and I love it. And I can't see myself going back into the grocery store. Instacart has told me I've saved like 328 hours by ordering online. Mm -hmm. And money. Cause I don't know about yeah. you guys, but I'd be tempted to just pull things off the shelf. And so when you yes. follow your little list online, it comes in yeah. handy. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm always putting my full trust in my Instacart and ship shoppers. I'm like, just you choose the fruit. You got it. <laughs> yeah. um, but <laughs> Okay, can we just shift this to the jeans conversation? Oh, yeah, the jeans. jeans. I really want to talk about this. Um, <laughs> the kind of jeans, it seems to be recycling each year, and it's kind of stressing me out. There was flare and boot cut, you know, when, we were, mm -hmm. when I was growing up. Then it was skinny jeans, and now it's yeah. like flare jeans are back, or the mom jeans, or what else? I don't know. Um, what are you ladies thinking about this? If I would have known, I would have kept all of them. Good grief. <laughs> that part. Now I got to restock. I don't know. I'm not really embracing that whole flare thing. I don't know. I think it's really important when you rock those, the right shoe. It's just too much to think mm. about. I prefer a, a tighter fit, a, more of a skinny. I just prefer that. I mean, you remember back in the day, we used to fold our jeans and pin them and all that. Yes, um, did. Did. I know. I'm dating myself, but oh, yeah, you, Aaron, and Heather, all of y'all, absolutely. <laughs> that leg, fold it up, put a pin. So I prefer yeah. a little bit of skinny. I don't think I'm kind of slow moving with this flare coming back. I'm just mm. glad they're still high waisted because I remember when jeans used to be like so low, and mm -hmm. yes. I did not do that. Yes, I love high waisted too, especially as a mom. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and then um you know the the skinny jeans like that's my jean right like that's yeah. the, it's it's my thing you know you don't have a lot of opportunity when you're tall and like you know right. more narrow you have your skinny jeans and that's it you have a cute stiletto heel maybe chunky it's 
And then, like you said, matching the pant the pants with the stiletto. Like, can you even wear like the the pointed toe shoe with the with the flare jeans? I don't even think that goes together. Yeah. I'm not sure. That's yeah. I'm running the runway nowadays, so I don't know. It's a lot, such but. a good point, though, Natalie. Like, I this is what's the problem with like fashion trends. It's like it doesn't take into account anyone's body type. Like, yeah. I'm supposed to wear flare jeans just because it's in. It might not look good on me. It might not be for you. Well, let's talk about the other opportunity. And this is this is something I'm utilizing um, more than ever since COVID. And it's funny, I don't go anywhere, but I hop on TV a couple times a week. And so instead of going and buying all new shirts or all new blouses or all new tops, each week I try something fun. This is a look at today's Rent the Runway. Da, 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 da. That's all you get. But yes, I love it. It's something fun and different every week. Um, and there's a lot of different subscription opportunities. There is Rent the Runway, uh, Stitch Fix. Have you guys tried any of those or are you still kind of doing the traditional shopping? I well, you inspired me to do Rent the Runway and then I never picked anything. So what was the point? Like I wasted all this money because I got the subscription, did get one shipment, didn't wear a thing of it because none of it fit. And then mm. I never did it again. So I waste, I don't know, I feel like I need to focus and pay attention and actually pick something. And You but. have to size up on Rent the Runway. You have to size up on Rent the Runway, girl. Mm -hmm. It's not you, it's them. Okay, thank you. Can you guys think of Newly? Like, it's spelled N-U-U-L-Y. Yes, that's oh. my next one. Yeah. How is that, Allie? It's good, because there's like three people on there. There's a lot of good um, brands that are a little bit more day-to-day -day for me. I feel like mm -hmm. Rent is a little bit more fancy. Like I go on mm -hmm. like, yeah. outfit or something. I did Stitch Fix for a little bit and I liked it. I think it was all in like me giving them direction on what I wanted. But when we're talking about jeans, that's something like you definitely need to try on. And it's so much more comfortable to do it at home. Um, now I since stopped the subscription because I didn't really need it with COVID and all of that, but maybe I need to check out now there's so many more options. So maybe I need yeah. to check out that one you're talking about, Allie, but yeah, that's a Tracy Campoli. She put me onto that one newbie and I haven't looked into it, but I'm going to have to. Thanks for reminding us. Yeah, about thank you. I've never heard of it. So I'm looking forward to checking into it. I'm excited for the weather to warm up and the sun to come out in Minnesota. That's kind of been rare. Um, up next, we throw back to some of our favorite show moments. You do not want to miss it. Don't turn that channel. You are at the table with Tommy Vincent, where there is always a seat reserved with your name on it. The affirmation for this week is, I will forgive me. This one is very challenging because oftentimes when we think about forgiveness, we think about the need to forgive someone else. And we don't even recognize the areas of our life that are being held up because we're not forgiving ourselves. Well, life has a way of resetting itself and everything always works together for our good. So choosing to forgive yourself is a necessary step to continue to open up the doors to your heart's desire. Now I'm having some very intimate live conversations on Instagram, on the Stay A While Show page, and that's at Stay A While Show. Every Monday night at 7.30, we're having conversations that dig into these areas. I invite you to join me at the table. And please, if you have not listened to season one of Stay A While podcast, please do so on Apple Podcasts or anywhere that you listen to your podcast. Now remember, life happens at the table. So meet me there. I look forward to speaking with you next week for some more virtual soul food. Welcome back 
to the Connect Show Twin Cities right here on the CW. So if you're new again each week, we are talking to boss babes and women who are just ready to level up in their life and their business. And we were looking back, it's been 10 months or 10 weeks, I should say, one quarter, one full quarter, January 23rd, we kicked off the show. And, uh, you know, I'm interested in hearing from you ladies, what, what has been your most favorite experience this far, favorite guest, as we look back. Um, I think it was super cool to see Alexis Spur on here. Um, I just feel like we're from such a small town. Who would have thought in 20 years we would be on a show together? Um, I kind of watched her journey as she was diagnosed with leukemia. And then, you know, throughout that, she found herself. She went to Florida and went um, pro and wakeboarding, which is, was super inspiring to just see someone from Spicer do such big things, which was also um, inspiring for me um, as a child to kind of know there's a lot more life out there. So it was really fun to, to be on here with her. Yeah. I think for me, it's all of the like behind the scenes stuff that you guys don't see. Um, <laughs> and all of us like, you know, if we have to, you know, say another line or say it again, um, I think that it's all fun. It's fun to see the show all come together once it's all edited. So I love all those kind of behind the scene moments. I think my favorite guest was our first one, Maria. Um, remind uh, me of the last name, you guys. Conan. Maria Conan Howard. Yeah. Burnsville stand up. Yeah. That was, that's Burnsville. So. She was so good. I just, you know, that was International Women's Day, right? If I'm remembering correctly. And it was just like, oh, wow, this is really happening. And it's so cool to be speaking with women who are like, you know, like Natalie said, walking it like they talk it. And mm -hmm. um, it was just good. Yeah, I do remember Maria. She was awesome. You said Burnsville. Boom, came right back to me. Yes. She was awesome. My favorite guest so far that I, well, I've had many, many people that I even know yeah. personally, but Carol Burton. Wow, she was powerful. Yeah. Carol Burton mm -hmm. speaks. I felt like we could have had her on for probably the whole show. She had so much gems that she was dropping and just so inspiring. So that was definitely one of my most memorable guests that mm -hmm. we've had so good. And you know who I keep hearing about? Nikki Vanacek. People were hitting me all last week. Oh, I'm <laughs> going to look into acupuncture. What's this cupping? And I just am so excited that people are really getting valuable information for their husbands, too, for you know, just opportunities. And uh, just like the water, Brenda Brazil, she had that amazing. I was yeah. just thinking about her, the water. That was where I learned the most. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. 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 Her water system. Water. Crazy. Yes. And of course, Gold Ivy Co. There's been so many, but we're excited to bring you plenty more. So it's always just fun to look back. Yeah. So each week we try and bring different inspiring, you know, guests and discuss topics that bring you value. Um, our guests and just make you laugh. We want to hear from you though, right? So leave us a comment on social media. Let us know how you're liking the show. We want to know what topics hit home for you and maybe some things that we want to talk about for the future. Yeah. I love it. Well, if you're enjoying all this girl boss magic um, and want to catch up on all the past episodes, you can binge them Netflix style on YouTube. You can go to Natalie's network. And don't forget to join our membership. Register today at theconnectonline.com. See you next week. Bye. Bye.